This is GE Masterclass. It's an imaging technology, but you're not sending cameras inside my body to take pictures. We're not. Talk me through the M, the R, the I of how an MRI actually works. So the M of MRI stands for magnetic. Okay. And an MRI needs a huge magnetic field. The reason we need this is we need a way to get signal from our hydrogen atoms. Okay. Hydrogen has a very interesting property mm -hmm. that it acts like a tiny magnet. Okay. Normally, it's oriented randomly. All of our protons are randomly scattered about, right. pointing different directions. But when you put it in a very large magnetic field, all of the uh, protons tend to line up with the magnetic field axis, but they also rotate about that main magnetic field at a very particular frequency. Okay. So then that brings us to R. All right. So the R stands for resonance. We can use the fact that all of these protons are rotating at a very particular frequency and apply a short burst of energy to those protons okay. using a radio frequency pulse tuned to that particular frequency. Okay. And this causes them to resonate, and we can measure that signal, which gives us uh, an indication of how many protons are in your body. So take me to the eye. Let's bring it home. Okay, so eye is imaging. What we can do is, in addition to this very large static magnetic field, we can add to it a smaller magnetic field gradient. Okay. By gradient, I mean it varies over space. Mm -hmm. like with a scale. Like a scale, so okay. it's uh, with a lower magnetic field at one end and a higher at the other. All right. And this has the effect of um, causing a separation of those rotational frequencies, okay. meaning protons at your head are spinning faster than those at your feet. Now you have a unique separation of frequencies along, for example, your head to foot dimension, okay. and we can tune the radio frequency pulse to a particular location mm. along the head to foot direction based on the frequency that we know exists at that location. So you're sending various gradients or, or kind of a spectrum of frequencies at my body in other dimensions. So we have to apply this frequency separation yeah. idea in all three dimensions, okay. three spatial dimensions. Okay. So I described the head to foot dimension. Right. So this would, for example, allow us to localize a slice uh, head to foot. But even then, all we have is a signal from a, sort of a, a sum of all the protons in that slice. Yeah. We still don't have localization in the left to right or front to back direction. Yeah, it could be, could be my skin here, it could be my heart, it could be my you spine. Never know. Yeah. Okay. So with x-ray and, and imaging techniques like it, the idea is to pass some kind of x-ray or something through the body yes. and then detect what is absorbed and what passes through in some kind of detector behind the body, okay. or more or less. MRI is very different. Uh, we're not passing anything through and listening for it on the other side. Okay. Uh, we're using the signal that's already existing in our bodies we're essentially indirectly probing them for information and mapping that information into a data space that we can create an image from. Turning data into a picture. Into a picture. We just did it. We just did we it. We know what an MRI is. We know what an MRI is. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome.